when I satisfy one of the basic condition and one additional condition, then they're going to call me as a resident, not ordinary resident. During previous year, staying in India and satisfy both the additional condition as well as the basic condition, my status may be resident, ordinary resident. If a person stays in India for a period of 7, 30 days or more in 7 preceding previous years, then he satisfies additional condition as per Income Tax Act 1961 rules. Warm welcome to fifth sum baby student. The subject we are discussing income tax one and unit two residential status and incidence of tax. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the concept of resident under section six as per Income Tax Act of 1961. I am Professor Rajesh L.R. from Department of Commerce and Management with the Ashtam First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. In the previous session, we have discussed about what is income, what is tax and definitions related to certain important points like person under section 2, sub clause 31, assessment year, previous year, assessee. These are the important terms which we have to discuss in every session of the classes and these definitions have been discussed in our previous session. In today's agenda, we are going to discuss about the residential status. Residential status to pay the tax by a person, an individual, whether is a resident in that one, whether is a ordinary resident or not ordinary resident, or whether is a non-resident only for the purpose of tax payment. So now we are going to check resident status of an individual, whether is resident or non-resident. Next, if I want to become resident, so what are the basic conditions we have? And if I want to become ordinary resident or not ordinary resident, so what are the additional conditions are there? And what are the important points related to our residential status? format of resident status. These are the topic we are going to discuss in the session. The first topic, resident status under section 6. As per Income Tax Act of 1961, it says that when for an individual, when he's going to pay tax, we have to verify his status only for the purpose of tax and not for the citizenship of India. And it is only for that particular year, it will be called as a resident ordinary resident or not an ordinary resident or non-resident only for tax law purpose. The taxability of individual in India depends upon his residential status in India for any particular financial year. The same that one for any particular financial year we are going to verify his residential status whether is a resident or non-resident. The term residential status has been coined under the income tax of India and must not be confused with the individual citizenship of India. The saying that one, it is only for the purpose of tax and not for citizenship of India. An individual may be a citizen of India but may end up of being a non-resident for a particular year. The saying that one, sometimes I am citizen of India but in case if I am not going to satisfy the basic condition laid down by Income Tax Act 1961, so then my residential status according to Income Tax will be non-resident. Right. Sometimes a foreign citizen may end up being a resident in India for income tax during for the particular year. They are saying that one, my citizenship is like I am a citizen of New Zealand, but during previous year, staying in India and satisfy both the additional condition as well as the basic condition, my status may be resident, ordinary resident. Or if I satisfy one condition of basic also, they are going to call me as a resident of India only for the purpose of tax purpose and not for other purpose. It is only the status to verify what is the tax amount the individual has to pay to the government. So clearly understand that one. The status is mentioned only for the purpose of tax law and not for any other purposes. And even the status is 
calculated or determined for that particular year and based on that we cannot depend and say that one for all the years it is only for that particular year the status is going to be determined for the purpose of income tax in india the income tax law in the classified taxable person as resident resident not ordinary resident non resident only for the purpose of tax if i want to become a resident if i want to become a resident if i satisfy either one or two basic conditions here so then automatically they are going to call me as a resident so what are the basic conditions we have here they say that one as per income tax act of 1961 he or she should have been stayed in india for a period of 182 days or more during previous year they are saying that one previous year the current previous year 2022 23 in 2022 to that nothing but from 1st april 2022 31 march 2023 if my stay in india is above 182 days it is above more than 182 days then i have satisfied this condition in case if my stay is only for 100 days or 120 days or 140 days i have not satisfied this condition so what is the next basic condition we have he or she should have been stayed in india for a period of 60 days they are saying that when during previous year 22 23 my stay should be 60 days and and during four preceding previous year my stay should be 365 that is nothing but 21 22 20 21 23 And nineteen and twenty and eighteen nineteen. In this four years, the total of this four years, if my stay is three sixty five days, then I have satisfied this condition. In case if my stay is only during previous year is fifty days, I have not satisfied half of this basic condition. Automatically, I am not going to satisfy the basic condition. When I have not satisfied this condition, it is automatically even I have not satisfied the first condition also. then they are going to call me as when i have not satisfied both basic condition then they are going to call me as a non resident say if i satisfy any one of the basic condition they are going to call me as a resident so what is the basic condition we have here my stay in india should be more than 182 days that is from 1st april 2022 up to 31st march 2023 my stay it should be more than 182 days so then automatically i'm going to satisfy first basic condition in case if i've stayed in india during previous year less than 182 days then we are going to verify the second basic condition here it says that one my stay in india it should be 60 days and with that one 365 days in four preceding previous year four preceding previous year so then automatically i'm going to satisfy the basic condition then they can call me as a resident as per the income tax law it is only for tax purpose and not for any other purposes next what are the additional conditions are there when i become a resident year when i become a resident they have to call me as a ordinary resident or not ordinary resident so what is this ordinary resident and not ordinary resident when i satisfy basic condition and both additional condition so then they are going to call me ordinary when i satisfy one of the basic condition and one additional condition then they are going to call me as a resident not ordinary resident so if they have to call me as a resident ordinarily resident so then i would have been satisfied basic condition and both the additional condition they are going to call me ordinary if i satisfy one basic condition and one additional condition then they are going to call me as resident not ordinarily resident so what is the additional condition we have here my stay in india should be 730 days or more during seven preceding previous year they are saying that one my stay in seven preceding previous year it should be 730 days or more 
So if I have satisfied this condition automatically by staying in India for more than 730 days, I have satisfied this condition. With that, even I have to satisfy the second additional condition. I should be resident for two years out of 10 preceding previous year. In my 10 preceding previous year, that is from 21 to 20 from year, if my stay for up to 13, 12 in this 10 years, if my status is two years, they call me as a resident, automatically I'm going to satisfy the second additional condition. When I've satisfied both the additional condition here, they're going to call me as resident, ordinary resident. If I couldn't satisfy any one of this one, any one of this one, they're going to call resident, not ordinary resident. So keep in the mind while solving the problem or to at the time of paying tax, check your status. Based on the status only, you have to pay the tax to the government. So for tax purposes, my status is very important for the purpose of paying any tax to the government during particular financial year. So let us understand some points are here which is gives clear-cut information for the students as well as the people who require the determination of residential status, uh, what it says now. If a person satisfies any one of the basic condition, then his residential status will be resident. What they are saying, already I have informed you people, if I am going to satisfy any one of the basic condition, they are going to call me as a resident. If a person satisfies both the basic condition and additional condition, that is nothing but two basic condition and two additional condition, then they are going to call me resident, ordinarily resident, resident, ordinarily resident. When I am going to satisfy one of the basic condition and one of the additional condition, that is one basic condition and one additional condition, then they are going to call resident, not ordinary resident. If um, zero basic condition has been satisfied, then they're going to call me as a non-resident. So here we have to verify clearly and we have to determine the resident status of individual before making any payment of tax to the government. So you may get certain benefits. So before making any payment, just check your resident status for your particular financial year where you are going to pay tax to the government. We will learn this one in a tabular form. Clearly, we can understand here. See, basic condition what we have here, my stay in India it should be 182 days or more during previous year. So, which is my previous year? 22, 23. How many days are there? 365. How the 365 days are split here? April 30 days, May 31, June 30, July 31, August 31, September 30, October 31, November 30, December 31, January 31, February 28, March 31. Totally, we have 365 days. In this 365 days, if I stay here 180 days or more, so then I have satisfied the first basic condition. So we have to verify whether I have to just calculate every month number of days I have stayed in India, how many days I have stayed in India during previous year. This is how we have to calculate. It starts from our current previous series, 1st April 2022 to 31st March 2023. So second basic condition, 60 days or more during previous year and 365 days in four preceding previous year. So they are saying that one. In this one, if my stay is 60 days during previous year, during previous year, and in four preceding previous year, 2021, 22, 2021, 19, 20, 18, 19. So totally in every year, we'll be having 365. 2019, 20 is a leap year, 366 and 365 days. Totally 1,461 days are there in the four years. Out of this 1,461, if my stay is for 365 days, then I've satisfied the basic condition by 60 days during previous year and 365 days out of 1,461, that is nothing but for four preceding previous year. So I've satisfied the basic condition. If I satisfy 
first basic condition and second basic condition. So then my status will be a resident. Then to verify whether I am ordinarily resident and not ordinarily resident, then we have additional condition. Seven preceding previous year, my stay, it should be 730 days or more. So if a person stays in India for a period of 730 days or more in seven preceding previous year, then he satisfies additional condition as per Income Tax Act 1961 rules. They are saying that one. So, 21, 22, 365, 20, 21, 365, 19, 20 is a leap year, 366, 18, 19, 365, 17, 18, 365, 16, 17, 365, 15, 16 is a leap year, so 366. So, total we have 2557. In this 2557 number of days, if my stay is 730 days or more, then I have satisfied first additional condition. And second additional condition we have here, resident for two years out of 10 preceding previous year, 2021, 22, 20, 21, 19, 20, 18, 19, 17, 18, 16, 17, 15, 16, 14, 15, 13, 14 and 12, 13 in this 10 years. So if I satisfied any one of the basic conditions, they're going to call me as a resident. Like this, if I've satisfied, see here, if I've been in India in all the 10 years, then my status will be resident, 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 resident. In all the 10 years, my status is resident. Now, how many we require here? Two years resident but my status is 10 years here so I've satisfied second basic condition also so when I satisfy both basic condition and both additional condition so they are going to call me as a resident ordinary resident if my status is if I satisfied one basic condition and one additional condition so my status will be resident not ordinary resident. If I couldn't satisfy basic condition zero, basic conditions are satisfied, then my status will be non-resident for 2022-23. So based on my status only, I have to pay the tax to the government here. And as per the Income Tax Act law only, all the things we have here. So it is only for the tax purpose and not for the citizenship purpose. So you have to analyze in such a way that one before making payment of tax to the government, first determine residential status based on that one. We have to pay tax to the government here and the status what we have determined here only for the particular year of payment of tax and not for the citizenship of India and is only as per the Income Tax Act and not from the other act right so understand this concept clearly and in the upcoming session we are going to discuss and we are going to solve the problems where you can understand how to determine the residential status of an individual and how much tax he has to pay those things we are going to discuss in the upcoming session it is called as incidence of tax in today's session we discussed about certain points called resident, ordinary resident, not ordinary resident and non-resident. So this is very important for all the individuals to know the status before making any payment of tax to the government. Thank you to all 5th SEM BBS students. In today's session, we learned about how to determine the residential status of an individual for the purpose of income tax law. And it is not for any other purposes. The status is determined only to pay the tax or to calculate the taxable amount what a person has to pay to the government here. So namaste to all 5th BB students.